Hi there, welcome to Ask the Chiropractor, your source for ultimate health, healing, and chiropractic related information. My name is Dr. Adam Rodnick out of Commerce Township, and we're here with our wonderful guest today, first time on the show, Dr. Josh Beaudry. Excellent to be here. I always love being here again. Great um, to have you here. Yes, uh, Dr. Josh Beaudry, um, out of uh, Clare Township, uh, middle Michigan somewhat. So we usually like to start off asking our guest uh, how you got into the profession of chiropractic and uh, some of the amazing results and some of the miracles that you've seen in the profession so far. Definitely. Um, one of the major things that happened to me, I was... Uh, I like to get uh, in car accidents. That's what happened to me. I, I got some uh, people like to. It, <laughs> some people do. I got rear-ended actually five times before wow. I got into chiropractic. What happened was uh, the first one. I was about uh, 18 years old, and uh, the rear-ending uh, it happened. The, the fellow was doing about, uh, I believe, it was like 35 miles an hour, and it took two years for me to recover from that injury, and I never fully recovered. Uh, later on, when I was going to my uh, undergraduate another accident happened and uh, the chiropractor, in, uh, he told me that if you do get in that car accident, the first 12 hours is really vital for you to, to get adjusted because your spine is really plastic at that time. So I went to a chiropractor within four hours and after that accident, it took me two weeks to recover. So I go, well, what's going on here? How, how can one take two years and one take two weeks? And it really, it, 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 invi it vitalized me, it made me think. Because I was, I was pre-med at the time, and I was thinking, well, what do I really want to do? Do I, do I want to see how this two-month, two-year thing happens? And as, as we progressed, as we progressed through school, I had a, I had a major question. Um, and it was, why do I have to give my body a synthetic drug when my, when my body can make it better? And as I, as I progressed through school, I kept asking all my professors and all my doctors, and nobody actually gave me a, a reasonable answer. They just said, take it and it gets rid of the symptoms. Take it, it gets rid of the symptoms. And I went to uh, a, the, the graduate school I went to, uh, Life University, and at it, the first day, the, the doctor um, stated that you don't have to, the body makes it perfectly. And from that, it was... Uh, a beautiful transgression into, into and that's a things. big misconception a lot of people in our country have is that as soon as there's any ache pain symptom whatever we have to immediately take some sort of medication whether over-the-counter or prescribed and uh, you know I don't want people to get me wrong that of course there's absolutely a time and a place for medications there's a time and a place for all types of medical treatment and intervention definitely but for every little ache and pain it is absolutely not necessary to take some sort of over-the-counter or prescription medication you know when you think about it a headache is not caused by a lack of Tylenol in the body or a lack of ibuprofen in the body. Exactly, you know? exactly. But not a lot of people think that way. They think, oh, I have a headache. I watch on TV. The TV tells me I got to take the Bayer's aspirin. A, a muscle spasm is not caused by a lack of muscle relaxers in the body. Exactly, exactly. You know, these things can help treat the symptom and that's what they do and that's what conventional most medicine is, is there to mm -hmm. treat and get rid of the symptom and that's where a difference comes in with with chiropractic care and what we're looking for and, and what we're trying to do with the body definitely definitely with and I, I'm sure you've seen this as well doc um, a lot of people they, they just know don't they don't know any better they know that if I'm healthy and I take a drug I'm gonna get sicker they know they they they, they look at these people they go I see my grandparents they're on 30, 40 drugs, some of these people, which is insane. That many drugs. And they know that they're getting sicker, but they don't know any better. They've never been told the message that the body control the body is controlled by the brain. Absolutely. We see I see every day people coming into my office that are on 20 to 30 different medications for all sorts of different things. Now each of these again, like there's a time and a place where we they need it, it's gonna help them, mm -hmm. it's gonna possibly even save their lives. But when you interact with that many different things, it's gonna cause all sorts of different uh, negative interactions in the Side body effects, also as, yes. long, as well as the positive but it's going to affect our liver it's going to affect our kidneys it's going to affect certain things within the body definitely definitely it's it's really scary we in my in my uh, graduate studies i went to the same school as you and i remember a professor telling us the brown bagging that that's basically the the they had nurses that would come in because these people have so many different doctors they're coming in and they got a neurologist and they got their normal MD and they got their orthopedist and they're all giving them different drugs and they don't know what they're giving them and literally the only people that are seeing this is the farm pharma the pharmacist that's why it's important to have a good pharmacist exactly with so many people on so many different medications and but one of the things I would recommend is to get a doctor 
or a pharmacist to see all the medications you're on and see if there's negative reactions because a lot of people are taking way too many. Absolutely, and a lot of times it gets bypassed. A lot of times they, they just go into the pharmacy really quick and they don't have their own personal pharmacist mm -hmm. or their own personal doctor who's going to look at these different interactions. And it's, it's important to make sure that they, they do keep track of everything. Definitely. Keep track that nothing's going to have an improper interaction within the body. And we're in that drive through culture, right? I'm exactly, just going to drive exactly. up to Walgreens or Walmart and boom. Exactly, and rather than having a personal connection, a personal mm -hmm. relationship with that person. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we're, we've been talking about this, but really when you see this, we see people, I'm sure you've seen this, when people come in and they're crying and they're saying, I have, I have nowhere to go. The muscle relaxants, the, the muscle, um, or not the muscle, the pain relievers, they're, they're not working. I'm on this Vicodin and Valium. I'm on everything and nothing's working and they're sitting there crying. And you give them one adjustment and you remove that mental impulse, that, that pressure that's put on the nerve and they cry and they get up and give you a big hug. I'm sure you have some stories to tell Absolutely. us Absolutely and a lot of times that first adjustment just really gives them a lot of hope that they see a difference sometimes almost immediately. A lot of times we see people in our office when it already is the last resort. Mm -hmm. When it already the last resort, you know, they've been on medications for years and years. They possibly have even already had a surgery or two due to their condition, whatever the, exactly. the various condition may be. And then finally they heard about us, oftentimes not from anywhere in the medical community, but oftentimes from a friend or family member. That's chiropractic is a lot of times just communicated through referral basis. Exactly. And so a lot of times we get them through their friend, their family member, their church, wherever, and they come to us with, at the last resort, mm -hmm. and finally we, we give them a chance, we give them some hope. Now sometimes the condition obviously can take a long time to get better because Definitely. it took a long time to get there, but Definitely. a lot of times just that first adjustment, they feel an immediate change in the body, immediate change in the nervous system, the Definitely. spinal column, which, which a lot of times gives them a lot of hope. Definitely. Now Dr. Baudry, since you've been in the profession, what kind of uh, results have you seen? And I know. We're talking a lot about people at their last resort, mm -hmm. but, but what we like more, myself personally, is to take care of people way before that last resort, specifically children. Definitely, definitely. I love taking care of children and families. It's, it's very, very invigorating. You get to get that, you get to see that child when they haven't developed those problems. When you don't have, I always relate it to a car. When you, don't ha when you have a brand new car and you give it an oil change and you rotate the tires and you take care of it properly, is that, that car is going to last a very long time. Absolutely. It's not going to have that wear and tear. But then some people, they don't do the oil change, they don't do the tires, they don't do the things. And the rotation's off or, some, or the, the, what's that word I'm looking for? The alignment. Uh, alignment, that's Which is it. the same in our spine, right? Exactly. Well, the alignment's off and that tire starts wobbling, wobbling. And they're told, this is a 70,000 mile, mile tire, right? And it only works for... 10 or 15,000 miles. Well, the same thing with a child. When you have that proper alignment and you get them early, they react so quickly, so quickly. It's, it's astounding. Literally, you'll see, see that child come in. I had one baby. This, this was just recently, a couple weeks ago. I had a little Amish baby come in that was blue. The child was literally blue, and the lips were blue, the eyes were blue, and it couldn't even barely scream. It was like, ugh. I've actually seen something like that myself where they come in in the, the blue for our audience what they call it a cyanotic meaning it's mm -hmm. not getting normal oxygen doesn't have the normal oxygen supply to the body so the skin starts to actually become a bluish tinge a bluish color to it definitely that and that child came in and the parents they had they had tried other other places they'd seen the, the other medical doctors and stuff and the thing that blew me away is the MD literally told the mother your child has acid reflux and I'm going, how does this correlate? We know because we've taken a lot of physiology that blue is lack of oxygen. That's, that's all it is. And that baby came in and to watch that child change, I, we adjusted that baby, I believe adjusted five times in an hour and a half. And because it was a very specific and light adjustment and you watch the color change and this, the people in the, in the waiting room, because. I was going through rooms and uh, as the baby was getting adjusted, the baby would come out and the colors would change and the people in waiting room were just blown away. And a question I get all the time, that's just an amazing testimony, mm -hmm. a question I get all the time is they see, people see in my office, they see that I take care of a lot of families, a lot of children, mm -hmm. they ask, why would you take care of a child? And of course there's these major symptomatic cases like that where the, the child's cyanotic, couldn't breathe properly, wasn't getting proper oxygen flow, and, and so what you did, if you could explain to our audience, Check the spine and... Yes, what, what I did was I checked the spine and up here, this is a very, very important bone right here. This is the atlas vertebrae. There's actually 77 
trillion nerve fibers that come right through here. It's called the foramen magnum, or the mouth of God. And right through here, it comes right through, and it goes through this, this bone. Now what had happened, because this mother had a very strenuous birth, and it was very hard, the child had come out, and this bone was out of alignment, so it had rotated a little. And that rotation had compressed what I, under my theory, was the vagus nerve. And as we look on this chart, this vagus nerve, it controls the heart and the lungs. And that's why adjustment of this first bone, when we took the pressure off with a specific adjustment, moved it very slightly. It took the pressure off and all of a sudden the heart and the lungs started working properly. Now that was invigorating. And that's amazing. That's, that's one of those miracle testimonies. And exactly. You know, how much is that worth to that child's life, to the exactly. parent's life? That's amazing. Exactly. How, exactly. Now, I tell people all the time, I see people come in, adults, with terrible spines, lots of symptoms, and, and I often tell them, I would hate to see their children come in one day to see me with a spine that looks exactly like theirs. And a lot of times that's exactly what would happen mm -hmm. if we don't maintain the, the spine and just like we would maintain the car like you're talking about with a new car. Exactly. We would much rather grow healthy children than take care of sick, unhealthy, symptomatic adults. It just I agree sense. with you again. One of the things that a lot of people well, a lot of people I see is that stress is run in families. So how the family deals with stress runs in the family. And as we know, the chemical, emotional, and physical stresses are what causes subluxations. But a lot of people go, well, it's my genetics. Well, we look at this. You can literally have, we, I've seen families where you have adopted children, so their genetics aren't the same. But their spines will subluxate the same. And it's because of the way they sit, the things they eat. Part of it is hereditary, but part of it is environmental. They, exactly. they do the same things. They go on the same trips. They play the same games. They play mm -hmm. the same sports. They, they do very similar things to the siblings. They do very similar things to the way the parents are raised. That's just the way that, that we are. But, uh, but again, a lot of it is hereditary. We see a lot of times scoliosis in a mother. Mm -hmm. Three kids, they have the exact same level of scoliosis, the exact same degree. And we see that a lot of times things are hereditary. So it's really, it's not one or the other. It's a combination. Definitely. Of hereditary and environmental with the damage that we see to the spine. Definitely. Especially in children. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I really like to stress the environmental though because when you start seeing the patterns that people come in with, and I think it's a learned behavior. I think the, it's a learned ability to deal with the stresses and the, the child will, will mimic what the parent or the mother will do. And you'll see the, the changes. You'll see literally, we've, I've seen a couple patients that the mother can't really deal with the stress that well, and you see the child start to mimic the same way. So when, when the mother gets adjusted, she has that big release, and the child will do the exact same thing. And that's one reason, too, why we do so much education in our office. We educate our patients on not only the things that possibly had caused some of the damage to the spine, but we want to have them fix some of those problems so they don't do those things at home so that they can prevent themselves from reoccurring the same damage. A lot of times I'll tell people, guys wear their wallet in their back pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. You constantly sit crooked. Well, what do you think it's going to do to the spine? Of course it's going to cause some damage to the spine. Women are constantly wearing purses on one side. They wear the purse and they don't wear it straight like this. they got to do that little hoisty thing yeah, to keep the purse yeah. on. And I don't know what they put in those things, but it's pretty heavy. I've seen some, some very heavy purses walk in my office. And that's just a Definitely. couple examples of thousands of things that people do that can cause damage to the spine over time that are environmental, that we want to give them the information that they can correct some of those things on their own so mm -hmm. they don't continue to elicit damage to the spine. Definitely. When you're talking about the purse, I, one of the doctors I, I know, um, I was at her doctor's talk, and she stated she literally had a woman come in, and she had one of those carry-on bags with the big, big loop purse, and she goes, okay, we're going to weigh how heavy your purse is. The purse was literally 55 pounds. 55 pounds, constantly putting pressure on the spine. Well, of course, it's going to cause it to go out of alignment. Of course, the nervous system is not going to be able to function when the spine's out of alignment, and over time, it's going to lead to diseases and dysfunctions. Exactly. I think we should get into that, Doc. Maybe elaborate a little more about how a compression of the nerve could lead to these problems. Absolutely. But before we get into that, I'd like to just talk a little bit more with you about um, what we said, why people say, why would you take care of children? Yes, and I, I agree. And I want to get into, I have a video clip here, the reason why children could possibly have damage to their spine and how that can damage the nervous system, and if uncorrected and undetected, can lead to dysfunctions over time and lead to a lack of proper growth and development. So Definitely. we're going to run that video clip here, and then we're going to follow that video clip with uh, a clip of me actually adjusting a child so that our studio audience can see exactly how gentle, how effective, and uh, how easy a chiropractic adjustment is for a child. Exactly. I think that's a major thing.
So after seeing that little video, it makes it very easy to see how children can have these trips and falls and how common and frequently it is for children to have trips and falls. And when they do that, it makes it very easy for their tiny little bones, which aren't fully formed as bones yet, are partly cartilage, makes it very easy for them to misalign. And as they misalign, over years they can cause more damage, they can cause improper growth and development. So as their children, it's so great for their spines and for their bodies to keep them in normal alignment, to keep their spine and their body functioning in an optimal position as they grow and as they develop. So here we have Sophia. Can you say hi, Sophia? Hi, I'm going to show you what it looks like for us to do a chiropractic adjustment on a child. So I'm going to start off here. This is our chiropractic adjusting table. I'm going to place on here our little tabletop that we use a lot for children. Ready, Sophia? We can hop right on up here. Need some help? Here we go. So she's going to slide right up here. She's just going to lay facing down. Doing great. First thing a lot of chiropractors do is we like to check the legs. And here you can see with Sophia that her left leg is about a quarter of an inch shorter than the right. And so the reason for that is that her hip is rocked backwards just a little bit. And again, they may have happened from daily trips and falls. A lot of times it happens directly from the birth process with children. So we're going to get up here. I'm going to start really gently realigning just a few of her bones. Have an instrument here, which is very lighter force, high velocity, called the chiropractic activator. We're going to use here to help make our adjustment. Ms. Sophia, can I get you to lay on your side here, facing towards me? What we're going to do here is just gently realign the lumbar spine, the hips, and the pelvis. And again, lay right on your other side here. And I'm going to have you sit right on up. I'm going to check her neck. And the cervical spine is really the most important when it comes to her immune system. With children, we see a lot of children that we're able to help with things like ear infections, allergies, asthma, even symptoms of things like ADD. And these nerves right up at the top control her eyes, ears, nose, throat, sinuses, brain function, and her immune system. So the more we can keep everything firing properly, the healthier she'll be. And that was it. She did great. Can you say goodbye, Sophia? Goodbye, Sophia. So you can see from the video how gentle and effective a chiropractic adjustment can be for a, ch or a child. You know, I see a lot of people say they see an adult get adjusted or mm -hmm. they see some of the clips on TV or something. They think that an adjustment is rough or painful and they mm -hmm. say, how could a child get that? But as you can see from the little clip here, it's very painless, very easy, and actually children like it. Children love it. They come into our office, they give high fives, they hop right on the table. In fact, we have families where three, four, or five children at a time come in and they fight over who's going to be the first one to get their adjustment. Definitely. I'm sure you see a very similar thing. I see a very, very similar thing. I have, I have one, you, when you're talking about this, how children love it, I have one little boy and he loves coming in. He goes, Mommy, Mommy, I love getting pushed on because after I walk out, I feel so much better. And it, it just, it, it's so nice. That's what it's all about. That's it's, what touches our heart more than anything. More it's than that, that little smile when you adjust the child and that big grin comes up. And how can you express that? It's just a beautiful thing. And we've adjusted even infants. I, I adjust infants all the time in my office. Now some of them for conditions because the infant came out and they have torticollis mm -hmm. or the infant has acid reflux or the infant has constipation or things like that. And we've helped with these conditions but often we even just check the infant just to keep its immune system and its spine lined up perfectly so that the body can grow and develop and function Definitely. perfectly. Definitely. I think one thing that has been bypassed a lot of people don't know is that every five years you have a brand new body and that's why you eat. And so you're going, well, why would my baby need to get adjusted? And obviously, we saw those videos, run and trip and fall, and we think nothing of it. Right, right. And, but when you think about it, every five years, so we're eating, we're taking in that nutrients, and we're building a new body. But are we building it healthy or sick? And now, even some of those trips and falls on that, mm -hmm. there were some pretty big trips and pretty big falls. Definitely. And every kid has a few of those here and there, absolutely. But, but even look at the, the normal things they do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Kids go down the staircase, every one on their bottom. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Exactly. I even, you know, they're landing from one foot, two feet higher, right on the table. Ba -bum, ba -bum. And they're giggling the day. whole way down, right? They're jumping <laughs> in the couch head first. Boom. Exactly. They're falling off the swing set. They're falling mm -hmm. off the tricycle. They're falling off the monkey bars, the bicycle. They're playing sports. We, none of us even got into mm -hmm. children playing sports. You know, and we know that that can be rough on the children's Definitely. bodies and spines. And like you said, our bodies are being replaced 
every five years. Cells are constantly being replaced. Mm -hmm. Our heart cells, every 90 days, are on a cycle. 90 days, you'll have exactly. an entirely new heart. Exactly. We want to keep the nerve function going to the heart perfectly so that they mm -hmm. can be replaced normally and healthy. Exactly. We want to keep the nerve function to the stomach, the gallbladder, the kidneys, the spleen, all these organ functions, the nerve impulses that control and communicate them functioning perfectly so that the body can be replaced and grow normally. Exactly. Now what are some of the things you've seen in your office where kids come in after these trips and falls and, and some of the kids you see in the office? Some of the things we, we see is uh, well, I think, I'll go back even uh, a little bit. I think some of us as parents are uh, guilty too. Because I don't know about any of you, but I, I, some of the children that I've played with, they love getting thrown into the couch. They love getting twisted around. You hold them by the arms, they want to be exactly, around, right? Exactly, exactly. whatever. Exactly. So even us as parents thinking, oh, we're just doing this and they're loving it and they're giggling and everything's good. What are we really doing? How, how much effect are we actually doing to that child? Some, some of the little children that come in. Now, a child under the age of 10 shouldn't have back aches, but we see little children come in with back aches because, like you were saying, boom, 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 down those stairs. Headaches is another one. I actually, surprisingly, we see lots and lots of children come in with headaches. Children should absolutely not have regular exactly. headaches. And exactly, exactly. I see children come in all the time that get headaches four or five, six times a week even. Exactly. A major one is sinuses. When the seasons change, those children just get all puffed up and they get all puffy and nothing's, and they're dripping everywhere and they don't know what's going on and they're feeling all stuffy and go, mommy, mommy, please help me. It always gets accounted for, they have allergies. Yes. And it's a very generic diagnosis that they have allergies mm -hmm. and not necessarily even to what, but they just constantly have sinus infections, they constantly have runny noses and it's just a sign that really their immune system isn't working up to par. Exactly producing too much histamine or not enough histamine right, exactly. to destroy those bad things. Right, we have this little chemical called histamine. Exactly. And when you have the right amount of histamine, life is good, you don't know there's anything going on. But when your body is producing too much of this chemical called histamine, which is, of course is controlled through our immune system and our mm -hmm. nervous system, controls how much or how little of different chemicals the body produces. So we have too much of this histamine, now we have runny nose, mm -hmm. watery eyes, sneezing, sputtering, all these things. And what's the first thing most people want to do is they want to take a antihistamine, mm -hmm. right? Knock it back down. Rather than focusing, first of all, on the reason why the body may not be communicating properly, may not be mm -hmm. producing the right amount of this particular chemical. Exactly, exactly. And I think one that a lot of people don't even think about is asthma. I don't know about you, but I, children come in with asthma and they don't have it when they leave. We see great results with that. And again, that's because the specific nerves that control the lungs may not have the right nervous system impulses to it. Mm -hmm. So if we go in and we realign the spine, give it a jolt, mm -hmm. give these nerve impulses a jump start so they can communicate properly to the lungs, the children can start breathing better. And I use this example all the time. Let's say a kid falls down, has one of those falls like we showed in the video a few minutes ago. They may not feel it, they may not know mm -hmm. there's a problem at all, mom, dad may not know there's a problem at all. But let's say one of these bones went out of alignment. And this particular nerve controls certain organs. Mm -hmm. right? Didn't matter which organ it is, Let's say it was the gallbladder, the spleen, the ovaries, different organs. Now they may not notice it. Mom's going to kiss it, make it better, go out and play again. Put, now, put the bandaid on, the boo-boo's better, right? right? That's yeah. right. Now 20, 30 years later, they have a diagnosis of some sort of major disease mm -hmm. where they may have a cancer or they may have uh, any other different diagnosis, disorder, uh, gallbladder problem, kidney major problem. Major dysfunction, problem, right? Depending on yeah. where the nerve was going, what that organ was. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that every little kid that falls down is gonna get some sort of sickness, disease, dysfunction, mm -hmm. or cancer, but as we can see, if for 20 years, the nerve impulse, even if it was only at 90% of its normal, 90% mm -hmm. over 20 years, over time, it's not gonna be replacing normal, it's not gonna be growing healthier, and it's that organ be, exactly. may have some sort of a sickness or some sort of a disease. Exactly, I always like to equate it to, are you growing healthier or are you growing sick? Now, a lot of people, like I was saying earlier, replication, replication, as you were saying earlier as well. So, say you're only replicating at 90%. Those 10 cells, let's say if out of 100, only 10 aren't replicating properly. Those 10, they keep replicating. And what are they going to turn into? Sickness, disease, and that's what exactly. tumor is. That's, that's in short the physiological process of how tumor is formed. It's good cells are being replaced improperly, and whether they're going to be replaced with bad, abnormal, or unhealthy cells, or if they're just going to be replaced with a different type of cell you end up with liver cells where the lung cells should exactly. be, or kidney cells where the heart cells should be. 
different type of cells or improper cells, and that's how sicknesses and diseases develop over years. These things don't happen overnight, they happen over years, exactly. decades, months. Exactly, exactly. I think one thing that was really interesting to me, I heard a, a statistic that for, um, you know how a lot of people say, well, we're doing um, preventative care. We're, we're doing mammograms for preventative care. Well, to see that cyst or that, that tumor in the, in the breast takes 15 years of development of that cell replicating over and over. So how preventative is that? And some of those are averages even. Exactly. Average years could be more, could be less. You know, they're saying now average 7 to 15 years for the average tumor to be diagnosed or seen even on our amazing technology where exactly. we have x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, mammography, all these different things. Uh, one thing I love, I love talking about is um, you have these special cells called killer T cells that go around in your body and they're like little Rambo cells and they destroy all those little cancer cells. Because a lot of people don't understand, they think cancer is just some oogie boogie man that comes into the body and they don't know how to get rid of it and they don't know where it comes from and uh, what do I do? Well, the, the thing is every day you're producing cancer between 12 to 18,000 cells. And every day those Rambo cells, those killer T cells, they go out and they kill all those cells. It's, it's so interesting and we, and we can get more into this uh, mm -hmm. next time on our show, but we're actually just about out of time today. So I want to thank you, Dr. Baudry, for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we'll see everybody next time on Ask the Chiropractor. Again, I'm Dr. Adam Rodnick out of Commerce Township. Remember that God gave us the gift of life and health, and what we do with that gift is our gift back to God. We'll see you next time.